everybody. We are here with Vincent Carthizer. He is uh, one of the stars, if not the star, of the film Ultrasound. It's now streaming as part of the virtual Tribeca Film Festival. And tickets are available now. I'm suggesting that you see it. Uh, this is one of those movies that is best to go in 100% cold. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to tell you about the film. So let me give you the quick synopsis. After his car breaks down, Glenn spends one hell of an odd night, that's an understatement, with a married couple setting into motion a chain of events that alter their lives, plus those of several random strangers. That's all I'm going to say. Vincent, how are you today, man? I'm great, man. That was perfectly vague. That, that literally told nothing about the story. Well, you might as well have just said nothing. <laughs> well, it was it was a, a, a bit of verbal fluff just to get somebody interested because you know I mean come on this movie I mean like where do you e where do you even begin like yeah it, it's one of those stories where like it, it it really is one of those like what the fuck is going on the entire time until maybe the last twenty minutes you, you're I, li you're literally like I, I don't know why I still <laughs> why why I'm still watching this but I need to I need to. And what the fuck is happening? And who is this motherfucker? Now, where's this motherfucker coming from? What's this guy got to do with all of it? It's it's like, uh, yeah, it's like David Lynch took like uh, like a roofie and then woke up and tried to like put his night back together. <laughs> yeah, but then still couldn't. Um... Yeah, and still couldn't. He was like, I still, there's still holes in my night and I'm David Lynch. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So, I mean, I was going to ask if you could give me a breakdown without giving too much away, but uh, yes. Um, yes. I can, so, I can say that, that it, it, you know, what would I say about it? I would say that it's the kind of sci-fi that is rarely made anymore. I mean, most of the science fiction, I don't even know if it fits that genre, but like mis mystery science fiction stuff that I see is like, on a big scale, right? It's like mm. going into space or going into like, you know, Hobbit world or whatever. And this is, um, this is on a much smaller scale. It's kind of like the movie Primer or like the movie Memento. Yes, or with, like Possessor. Right, it's dealing yeah. with like the, the world we live in, very simple amount of characters, very simple amount of like environments, things you're familiar with, but the events that are happening within that world into those characters that you recognize they're not there's no romulans there's no you know pointy ears but the things that are happening with those people are events that are unique and uh and at the end of the day you might wonder if they're true and it's already happening you know um are we already living in that sci-fi world and we just don't know it yeah, it was like a mirror maze of a plot. I mean, you you would you'd think, okay, cool, we're going this way, and then bam, you hit a wall, and you're like, wait, 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 you know, and you're feeling around. I mean, it was honestly, uh, I think it's my favorite thing at Tribeca. Oh, that's really awesome to so, say, man. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it so much. It's funny you say that too about how you think you're going one way because I was talking to somebody about it, and I said it's it's like um, there's certain things, there's certain elements in the story that you've seen in other stories. Right, like he he ends up in this married couple's house, and there's this proposition given to him, and you've mm. seen that proposition in other films, and yeah. so there's a part of you that's like, okay, I can like stake my tent here, or I can drop my anchor here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, no, you can't, because <laughs> it's not that thing. <laughs> you just thought you were gonna be told that story, and I love that about it. I love that like you constantly are thinking, okay, now I know where we're going. Now I know what's gonna happen next. And then, uh, and then you don't. You really don't. Even as even as someone reading the script, I was like frustrated and like so pleased at my frustration. I was like, "Why? Why are you? But thank you for not. But couldn't you just? But do not. But but do it. But don't. God. But don't. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. Well. Okay. Let's talk about something we can talk about. Kinda. Okay. Uh, who is Glenn? Who is this character? Glenn is a guy who has never found his place in the world, or, or maybe he has found his place in the world, but it's kind of just, um, it's kind of just clicking along without a lot of events. 
mm. which which can be a very wonderful life. You know, you you know, oftentimes I look at when I fly into cities, I do this a lot. I look at like the houses and I imagine someone going to a nine to five job and they go home at night and they have no worries. They have no family. They have no responsibilities, right? They pay their bills. They, they watch what they want to on TV. They read which book they want to read. They go to sleep. They go on a hike if they want to. They have their hobbies and they go to sleep, but they, they have no responsibilities. They have no bigger meaning. They have no bigger want or, or driving motivation in their life. And that's Glenn. He just has a very simple life. And um, I think it's lack, there's a lack of love in his life. You know, he, he doesn't have something that sparks his, his soul. And yeah, he feels definitely like uh, settled. Yeah, he feels settled and like, and a little bit like, not hopeless, but a little bit like he's, he's given up in a sense where he's like, He's he's not exactly like MGTOW or like you know he's not exactly <laughs> like uh, an incel of sorts, but he's kind of like well it wasn't meant for me you know I'm just Would an you average say complacent dude. maybe uh, what what's that complacent yes maybe? he's totally complacent and and then as what happens to all, often he's coming from a wedding when when we first see him he's he's driving home from a wedding and what often happens when you go to things like weddings or you know the birth of a child or these big events. And I had this through my 20s and most of my 30s where I wasn't married and I didn't have kids. And I would go to these events and uh, upon leaving, I would be like, am I missing something in life? You know, Mm -hmm. like most of the other people there were married. They were all dancing with their spouses. Um, Or or if you go to a place where there's kids and all of a sudden everyone who's there has kids and all the kids are playing and you're kind of like, I'm not part of this world. (laughs) And as you get older, your friends all get married and they all have kids. I don't know if you've run into this. I don't know how old you are, but oh, I know yeah, through totally. my own. Right, exactly. So it becomes and, this thing and. where like, even if you don't want that in your life, you do kind of question your life. You're kind of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, like, how am I going to fit in these people's world now? And so he's at that place where he's like driving away from a wedding. And I think he's feeling a little bit alone. Like he's not part of that world. And he's also not part of this young, like 20 year old frat boy bachelor world. Hmm. And he's kind of like, what's my place? And then this event happens and there's a possibility that comes to the forefront that could be a meaning for his life. Maybe his life will have some sort of responsibility and it'll be the, the catalyst for him to change, for him to be more. And he embraces it and he goes, let's, let's, let's go upon succeeding at this thing. And then like you said, with many of these things that, all of a sudden that just disappears. And, and I mean, at least he has a winning lottery ticket. So he's got that going for him. But, <laughs> oh yeah, know. that's that's how it all starts. He wins the lottery. It's, it's really <laughs> just a story of, of a very poor man who becomes very rich. Very and, rich, uh, very just quickly. Lives the dream. <laughs> yeah, lives go see that movie. Indeed. Enjoy that. Um, <laughs> so is that what drew you to the film? The, the, the way it was so convoluted and perplexing and- it was like nothing I had ever read. And I've been doing this for 35 years. And I've been reading scripts for 35 years. And I've never read anything remotely like this story. I've never read a story that when I'm reading it, I'm, I, I'm so shocked at the audacity of the author, of the mm. screenplay writer, yeah. to, to present a story in this format, in this way, with this many holes without without any sort of apology without any sort of need to open the door and say oh come on audience come on in Mm. they're like stay out in the fucking rain i don't give a shit about you stay out in the rain and you watch this story through tinted glass like stained glass and you make of it what you will i don't give a shit about you and i love that about it well i would even argue that it doesn't have holes i think it's pretty it doesn't have holes but it doesn't yeah but 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 you don't know that until the end. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you're just, the whole time, okay, you're piecing together. The, you're just like, what? You know? Yeah, I feel like most most stories that I read are very nicely. It's like, it's like, it's like taking the, a, 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 a piece of fabric and slowly unveiling a, a poster, mm-hmm. right? Let's say it's a poster of two people falling in love right and then you're slowly pulling it back and it starts with like you know the story over here and then it finishes here and it's a very 
peaceful way of 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 viewing the story. And this is much more like um like just they just open up a box and there's just a bunch of pieces in there. <laughs> They're just like, there you go. <laughs> There you go. What do you think of that? And you're like, Close up on fuck. The, yeah. <laughs> and then slowly the pieces come together, but not at all in the way you think they're going to. And um, in, in some ways it's like, and I, I mean, Tenet is that way in a lot of ways. Like yeah. you watch that movie Tenet and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. It felt like, I got to watch that again. Normal. Like yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Um, but but uh, the thing about this is that Tenet, I watched like three times and I still, I still think there's, things I don't understand about it. Whereas this one, I, by the end of reading the script, I understood everything that was happening. Yeah, yeah. Like everything came together. Like the picture was completed. The puzzle, the poster was on the wall. I could see the whole thing. I, I mean, there's some questions left unanswered, but the 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 gist of the thing is there. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you're right, there aren't really any holes, but it's just the way in which the story is doled out to you. You really are on the same ride as your protagonists it's and there's more than one so fun it's just so much fun oh i'm uh, glad you liked it man i give yeah, i give I all it. the credit to the director and the writers i mean a hundred percent of the the credit goes to them because uh telling a story like this is not easy and no, it takes uh, they did it magnificently skill. yeah so listen thank you so much for taking the time uh again ultrasound is now streaming as part of the virtual tribeca film festival get your ticket see this movie and if you don't see it now it's going to be at another film festival coming up so just see it uh <laughs> Vincent, <laughs> thank you so much for uh taking the time and best of luck with your your release thanks norman appreciate it man all right buddy take care